I've been thinking a lot in recent months about what is the biggest problem in the church today. I am the biggest problem in the church today. I think it's really easy right now to look around the world and to see a whole lot of problems and a whole lot of devastation as our culture collapses. It's equally easy to look around the church today and to point to all kinds of problems. These hierarchs, these decisions, these changes, whatever it is that is causing us so much uh, suffering or pain or agony or discomfort. But the reality is that we have been a fallen human race since Adam and Eve listened to that serpent in the garden and ate that fruit. And we have been a church which is indefectible and perfect, created by Jesus Christ, the spouse of Jesus Christ, but made up of sinners, made up of sinful men and women, and so very far from perfect on the human level. And it's really easy, I think, in our weakness to look around and to point fingers all around us without having the courage or the insight to point the fingers back at myself and say, well, where I find problems all around, the biggest problem is that I'm not yet a saint. Now, uh, when we were baptized, and when we were saved, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ through the saving waters of baptism, saved from sin, and given the gift of sanctifying grace, which is nothing less than the Holy Trinity dwelling in our souls, we were also given everything we need in a life of virtue, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, all the fruits of the Holy Spirit that are supposed to come forth from those, everything we need to become the saints that God has created us to be. We're not supposed to just live life um, struggling with the same old sins all the time, embracing our imperfections, and then somehow to sneak into purgatory by the back door where all the real work of our purification is going to happen so that we can go to heaven. That's not how it's supposed to work. We are meant to cooperate with God's grace that he gives to us first in baptism, nourishes for us in the Holy Eucharist, restores to us when we fall into grave sin and need to have it restored through a good sacra sacramental confession, nourished by prayer. That's all meant to be the life that then comes to a full flower in holiness. God needs you to be a saint. He needs me to be a saint. And he gives us everything we need in order to accomplish that beautiful work within us, his work within us. If you become a saint and if I become a saint, we will not find any problems because everybody will be a saint and we will be waiting for Christ to come again in glory. So I think that uh, the more we can embrace the reality that, uh, that my project of sanctification is the most important project before I start pointing fingers all around, then I think we're gonna be a lot happier and a lot less anxious. And also we'll be able to roll up our sleeves and have some really good work to do in growing a life of virtue. Our founding uh, prior, who became, became the first abbot of this monastery, Father Abbot Ladislaus, he used to say to the young men who were interested in coming and joining them in their project of religious life, he used to say he needed them to be more interested in reforming themselves than they were in reforming the institution, that is, than in reforming the monastery they were joining or, re or reforming the church of which they were a part, the Catholic Church. Their interest in reformation, in reform, had to begin with their own lives. I think this is what sets us apart from so many other kinds of Christians. All those times through the history of Christ's church from Judas in the upper room with the apostles through the Gnostic heresy, through the Arian controversies, through the Protestant revolt, through all of the places where Christians depart from the Church of Christ, it's usually because they're trying to reform the institution before they're trying to reform themselves. I wonder what would have happened in all of those horrible moments of division in our Christian history if those reformers were more interested in reforming themselves than they were in reforming 
the problems that they saw outside of them and yet still within the church. Let's not imitate their misplaced desire for reform. Let's stay firmly in union with the one true church instituted by our Savior Jesus Christ and allow him to help us with the work of reforming ourselves and so becoming the saints he created us to be. And let's pray for each other in that project. If you're looking for some help with that project of becoming a saint, we have a new series to offer you on the Abbott Circle. It's called Five Keys to a Truly Catholic Life. Those five keys are goodness, hospitality, beauty, generosity, and wisdom. So let's dive in with goodness. Goodness. And unlike some other lists of five and things that might be a little bit shallow or maybe not quite so in-depth, we really want to dive deeply into these beautiful truths with you and to help give you some encouragement and some instruction, some formation in how it is that we can get on with the project of our own reformation and our own sanctification. Go to the link in the description to sign up for that series, that video series, for free. God bless you.